Hey guys, Omar here. Good morning. I've got my little B&H bicycle here. My little B&H bicycle. And look, you gotta check out Bambi. Look at this. How cute is that? One of the great things about coming to this event is that Sony takes care of the models, the styling, professional makeup. Imagine you had to go out and do your own shoot. You have to invest in all of that. So last night was fantastic. They had models, they had dogs to test the dog, dog audio folk, what's it called? So last night I shot with the A9. The A9's uh, viewfinder is a lot brighter than the A7 III. Uh, so it's a little bit of overkill of what I'm gonna do today because I borrowed a macro lens, 90 millimeter G Master macro lens. And I um, figured I'd walk around and get some macro. I'm here with the berries. I rarely shoot macro, so let's have some fun with it. Uh, I'm just amazed how close this lens get. L look at the minimum focus distance on this thing, watch. You could actually see my fingerprint. Oh! All right, first let's get some macro video here, people. Look at this, yeah. <laughs> Zero depth of field. Uh, so what you wanna do is raise your aperture so that we can get some depth here. Let's try F13. Nice, F13 works. So if you're shooting stuff close up, you cannot be at 2.8. Wow, that looks kind of creepy actually. Let's take this picture. Oh my God, shooting macro is so therapeutic. I think it's like the opposite of shooting a wedding event or like war photography. So uh, it's a whole brand new world, you know, and you kind of work your brain super fun. So you can make a photograph out of almost anything with a macro lens. So if you're terrible at photography, get a macro. So let me show you what I mean. Check this out. Look at that right there. That's just some acorn, right? Right? Ugly. All right, let's take a picture of that. I'm gonna show you that. Crazy. The other beautiful thing is that you just sort of appreciate nature a little more. The design and nature, lines, and it's awesome. We should black and white one. Call it art. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm like a kid with a new toy. So the inclination uh, might be to get everything as close as possible. But I have to, you know, refrain and sometimes back up and actually get a good composition because it could just become like a trope and just get as close as you can. So kind of fun to figure out, do you get as close as you can? Do you back up? The other thing is with a macro lens, you have to shoot at f8, f11 for any depth. Uh, so you need like higher ISOs if the light is low or just go in the sun. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> Burrito. All right, we got burritos here. Nice. See that right there? Whoa. Alright, awesome. It's actually later in the day, had lunch, went to a few classes, got to talk to the Sony people about uh, you know, features and things we'd like to see. And so I'm back out again, gonna shoot a little bit more macro uh, because I need to return the lens. Okay, a couple of more macro challenges. Number one, the wind. <laughs> Since you're shooting at such a small aperture, f8, f11 for depth, well, that slows down your shutter speed. So wind picks up, you get blurry images. So you have to raise your ISO sometime or add a lot more light. A lot of people do uh, macro photography with flash, which is something we don't have. The other challenge is scale. You take pictures of things that uh, the person doesn't know how small they are. So I took pictures of these little like acorns and I'm looking at the photograph, they look like they're full size. And then I took a picture just for scale so you could see my finger in the shot. You can't stick your finger in every shot because that's just weird. <laughs> so macro seems to work for things that people know the size of, insects and, you know, everyday items, something like that. But plants might be a little tough. All right, so here's an example of that. This little piece of pumice. Have you ever heard of pumice? It's a volcanic rock that's very light. will float in water because it's got air bubbles in it. So I'm showing you the size of the rock. See it? <laughs> okay, here we go.
Now the clutch feature on this lens is really interesting. If you pull it to autofocus, it gives you autofocus, duh. And if you wanna get just a little closer and fine tune, you just pull the clutch out. Like I mentioned, just like the 16 millimeter 1.4 and some of the other lenses from Fuji. So I like that. Yay! Okay, just for fun, let's do this little acorn here so you can see how small it is. And while we're here, let's do a dollar. You ever see the owl on the dollar? If you go to the one in the upper left corner, that little curve, there's a little owl hiding. Look for it. I'm gonna take a picture of it. Okay, so I just saw Gerald Undone who helped me out with this. He actually owns this lens. If you don't know Gerald Undone, I'll link him up below. But uh, two great options here uh, for macro. One of them is you can choose your distance. So if you're only going close up, you can pick the focus range. That'll focus faster. So I'll use that for the ant. And the other one is steady shot because shooting macro, you have to really be still or have a tripod. So steady shot, very helpful. Uh, so very good for macro. Uh, let's try to get an ant. Okay, that's it, I'm done. Uh, shooting macro, totally therapeutic, totally fun to just shoot small objects and think about composition and also see the world in a new place, in a new way, sorry. Uh, I gotta return the lens now and I apologize if all those pictures suck, but I'm not a macro photographer. But the point is, as always, I had fun. All right, see you guys next time.